This is Harry Murray at Murray's Fly Shop in Edinburgh, Virginia. Today, let's talk about the series that I refer to as Magnum Streamers. What I was trying to do here was develop some fairly good sized flies that would match the bigger bait that the bass feed on. The high flies are tied on long shank size four hooks and many of them do have long bodies, so they do have quite an appeal to the bigger fish. And we'll show you how to fish them, and especially the particular areas in which we fish them. There are a number of flies in this series that we really do find effective. Now this is the Magnum hog sucker that you see on the left. It really is a mouthful for these bass and the big bass feed on it. The fly you see on the right is the one I just call the Magnum hog sucker. We do catch a lot of big fish on this. When I was a youngster growing up in here in Edinburgh and all the old timers were bait fishing, this is the bait that they would use to try to catch their big fish. And in many cases, it was very successful. A lot of the hog suckers live on these gravel bars. The stream is flowing to your left. Right where you see the pointer going through there is where a lot of the hog suckers are. I used to fish with an old timer here in Edinburgh. He would take the rod, the bait casting rod of the old days, and he'd really move down those gravel bars and set one or two rods with a hog sucker on it and he'd fish right along those gravel bars. Now what I had this angler do was cast out in front of him and just strip it back across that gravel bar. We would really do find that most of those hog suckers are in that in the low light area. My old bait fisherman that I was referring to He'd want to get down there the last hour of daylight and fish right along those gravel bars. The hog suckers are actually very, very strong swimmers. They live in the very heavy water. When we moved into this, we had talked about what we might find the bass feeding on in there. Jeff made his first cast relatively close to where you see there. And he caught a very large smallmouth right in there on his Magnum hog sucker fly. He landed that one, made a cast a little further downstream, caught the second one, another cast a little further down, and caught the third one. But like we saw them in the gravel in the evenings, during the day, a lot of those hog suckers are in exceptionally heavy water. You can get by using a floating line, but you want to make sure you've got your rod tip pointed where the line is coming out of the water. I use a line hand strike as well as a rod strike here, because if they're bass in those riffles like that feeding, they're big bass and they are feeding heavily on those hog suckers. The darter minna you see on the left is a strong swimmer. You can tell by the way he's built, he's really built to handle fast water. The pattern we developed is on the right and it is extremely effective. That's the Magnum Darter. When we approach this series of pockets, it looks so productive. We beached our canoe upstream just off Jeff's shoulder. He moved out in here as he caught his first good sized bass right where you see the number one. Those are fast pockets. They're deep pockets. Some of them range from knee deep to oh, some of them they even approach shoulder deep. But Jeff caught the first one in there at number one, he landed that, took our pictures, Next thing I knew, he got into the 
number two right there were the two shows. They're in those pockets. And as I say, they're, they're built for fast water. They're lying in the fast water. But by stripping that through those areas, see that all that current is flowing away from you. It's taking the food to the minnows. And Jeff caught another nice bass right there at two. Landed that one and began to work on down through each of those pockets. Number three, he caught another one. Now he continued this process all the way down as far as you can see on that left hand bank. You can see the current makes sort of a swing to the left. Every place we found fast pockets with fast water, we were picking up bass, and some of them were surprisingly nice, solid bass. We were doing this with a floating line because that is a weighted streamer, but it's a very, very effective technique. This is the one we refer to as a creek chub. He's got a lot of different names, but basically here in the valley, we would call this a creek chub. And they're in almost every part of the riffle that, uh, in the river that you'll see, except the riffles. They're not going to be in the heavy riffles. The fly you see on the right is the one that we developed that's called the Magnum Creek Chub. The creek chub minnows live in more of the open water than many of the minnows. They're not in the riffles, but they're in that water that you'd see right in front of John. All the way down through there, he'd make successive casts, sweep, sweeping them out. Now, that all that current's flowing away from you, but it's flowing at a very normal rate. It's not fast by any means. That's where you're going to find the Magnum Creep Chub. Now, after John fishes that, he'd go over and cover the same type water over in there. Every piece of water you see in front of you is going to hold the Creek Chub minnows, and the bass will feed on them wherever they find themselves. The Magnum Bluegill is a fantastic pattern. Back when I was a kid, 10, 12 years old, all the serious bait fishermen for bass had bluegills in their box that they were very secretive about. When nobody was watching, they'd sneak them out of their minnow boxes, put them in their minnow buckets, and off to the river they'd go. So we developed this magnum bluegill fly that you see on the right. All the bass feed very heavily on them, especially from the time they hatch out until the middle of the summer. They're a size that even a 10-inch bass can eat. This is an angler that was in my smallmouth school. In fact, he came back and took it a couple of years. And he is a very good fisherman. He was fishing with that magnum bluegill right in that water you see over there. Now that water's flowing from right to left. So Dave was casting back in there, stripping his fly out about six inches every five, ten seconds to swim it out. See, the bluegills are back in there because hopefully they're protected. But when those cr bass crash back in there, they are not protected. Dave caught a bass in here that was probably just about four and a half pounds. And it is fast action. So right where you see above, he had done well. He moved down a little bit and back in that protected water. See, the, the bluegills themselves are actually in the grass. I call it clean grass. To me, that means it's sparse enough in there that the bluegills can shoot back in there and get away from them sometime. After he fished that, then he waded on downstream to our right, and then he fished all the way down through that grass bed, catching bass like crazy there. It's a very effective technique because the bluegills are really very plentiful in almost all of these smallmouth rivers, and they are very, very good food value for the bass. 
The magnum streamers that we've covered, in fact, the magnum that you see in that bass's jaw, they are very effective. We've kept them streamlined so they cast well. We're using long shank hooks. They really show the bass a mouthful, and the bass take them very readily. The bass fishing that we're getting this year is very impressive. We've had the best fishing over the last couple weeks that I've had in many years. So take advantage of them. Use these flies that match the natural minnows that we've discussed. Use the techniques that we've touched. And I think you'll find that you'll get excellent smallmouth fishing.